Hey everybody, Aaron Fisher here, and welcome to Afternoon Astonishments from Conjurer Community. Today I am joined by Alex Slemmer. Say hello, Alex. Hello, everybody. Excited to be here as always. So happy to see you. Adam Grace and Steve Barcelona are on assignment today. Now today we're going to be looking at the magic of an old friend. I first saw him in 1995. I first got lost with him uh, on the road in a city around 2007. Alex, when did you first meet Leonard Green? Oh, early 2000s. I was uh, fortunate that he came to a convention and then I was production assistant on a big series of videos that he did. It was probably about seven DVDs on all of Leonard's magic that he did with A1. I, I was fortunate to be production assistant and hang out with him during those shoots. And uh, he's very kind to me and opened my mind up to lots of new ideas and ways of thinking about magic and many other things in life really really a great great man i love leonard green well it's a beautiful stuff it's amazing stuff and there's lots of stuff to think about your own magic when you think about how leonard in his singular original way has gone about doing everything he does so let's uh it's the kind of thing that'll make a lot more sense once we've watched him a little. So why don't we get it going with this first little piece? Of course, Alex is queuing it up. I wonder, it's probably not one of those things where we want to say much about it, except this trick took the world, magic world by storm, right? And continues to. If you haven't seen it before, it's one of those things that makes your eyes sort of bug out when you see it go, what is happening right now? It's a good one. Let's watch this. Take any card and show the camera on the card. Eh, seen it. <laughs> seen this one. <laughs> Put it back anywhere, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and look at the card. Uh, and don't forget the card, right? And shake my hand so I don't steal it or do something. Actually, I got cramp in my finger here. Okay. <laughs> now. Here, the thing I will do now is to steal the card, right? Uh, I think this was the card, right? Yeah. So, <clears throat> here is a little new thing. Oh, sorry. Don't look at the beam. Sorry, my fault. This is a high frequency laser. Yeah. And it's enough with a fraction of a second to destroy the retina. Sorry, my fault. <laughs> but. It takes, uh, it takes half an hour before it works. We have plenty of time to see my whole performance, right? <laughs> so now, this is very useful in card shooting. You see the beam? <clears throat> when I deal the cards in the beam, they disappear, right? <laughs> because they are on uh, direct on, on, on the... And then, yeah. And your card was six of... Uh, Diamonds? Yes, good. So here, I, I locate six of diamonds, move it back, and we have the card here. And then I take back the other one. And then, yeah. Very useful. Wow, the laser. That, I first saw him do that at Fector's Finger Fling and Frolic in 1995. And it had been going around a couple years at that point, huh? Even in 95, yeah. And that's, I would imagine that it was pretty memorable for you. I remember when I saw it the first time, I was like, how? How can he be doing what he's doing here? And I've studied it extensively and I'm still sort of at a loss. That he's, he's, he's got some amazing ideas that are, some of them are incredibly difficult to do. And it seems like he's the only guy that can do them. <laughs> that one, it seems like it's one of them. It's really a cool trick though. Just seeing a card vanish as it hits the table is like, what an effect what an effect really good yeah uh ethan that blew ethan's mind and uh you know i always take that as a big sign because ethan's not a magic guy you know so there's so much to say about the leonard uh that's totally one of those rare situations where you have a new effect uh you know to be openly dealing cards that vanish into the light uh, this is one of those tricks where when 
people, hey, have you seen Leonard Green? We're going to see Leonard Green tonight. And you say, oh, what's he do? And say, he deals the cards and they vanish as they, as they, he, he turns on a laser. And as he deals the cards into the laser, they vanish into the light. That's the kind of thing that you say, because what else would you say? And then, of course, that's what happens, you know? So uh, we appreciate your requests out there, but uh, we've actually got it all curated. So we're going to do the show we got. Uh, Alex, what are we going to do next? Now we're going to do a classic card trick that has sort of Leonard's twist on it that makes it a little bit more explicable. If you've seen the, the effect before, you'll probably get the gist of what's going on. But if you haven't seen it before, that little extra twist that he's put onto this thing, it makes it really into a miracle. And it's just a great, a great quick piece of card magic. Let, let's check it out. Yeah, now the last betting. For example, you're satisfied with the shuffle, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So here we have a shuffle pack. And now, uh, who is the victim? You. <laughs> you and I. Uh, take any card here. Yeah, I'll start this Look way. Look at it, put it back, remember <laughs> it, right? So now we have taken any card from the pack. And you can't lose anything. But if I if we make a bet, we bet $20, for example, that the card... We're just dealing with it. Your hoop. It's 50-50% that the card is in your hoop, right? And now, if I continue, now it's 75%. <laughs> That you have got the card. And now, uh, I don't know. 87 and a half or something. And now, it's a very high percentage that you have got the card. And now it's 1 to 52, right? Fifth, yeah. What was your card? The Ace of Hearts. Yeah. <laughs> Go. Thank you. Well, that's interesting, Alex. It's an interesting effect. You, I think it's know, a really cool card trick, man. I like that one. We we know as spectators or I don't think I'm stepping out of some big uh, magic uh, expose closet here to say that there is one spot a card can be in in the deck where you, you can do all that stuff and that's where it'll end up. Right. The key is finding that spot. You know what I mean? That's right. And there's uh, a couple of ways to cheat that spot as well. <laughs> sure. I mean, a, per a person uh, such as, my, and I, and I, of course, that had a certain, uh, it's so funny. I was about to say that had a hands-off uh, look to it when of course his hands are on the cards at the entire time, but it, it still felt to me like more of a hands-off trick than, than the trick before, you know what I mean? Because that trick, a sleight of hand artist might use his wiles, whatever wiles you use to say, hey, the card's over here before you do the laser trick. Like before he did the laser trick is a really interesting thing. Alex, I'm guessing that your experience would lead you to believe that our non-magician friends find Leonard's laser to be every bit as exciting as the magician friends. Oh, it's very true. I uh, I had an experience because I, I got to work on the, as a production assistant on on his uh, his videos that he made. There was a day where we had lunch together, and it was just he and I. And it was sort of the beginning of the whole thing. We were going from magic convention world into production world to make these things happen with lay audiences, right? Mm. And on the way, he and I go to lunch. And we have sushi. And he ends up asking me to do a couple tricks for him. I do a couple things. And, I, you know, I feel silly doing anything for Leonard, especially at that point in my, you know, my magical uh, 
journey. Yeah. Sure, I sure. was a young man. Yeah. And I, uh, you know, cause it's literally like 20 years ago, 15, 20 years ago. And, and I, uh, start doing a little bit of magic. And then he's like, well, let me do some stuff for you. He's like, I'm sure you've seen some of the stuff. And I, I just said, I would love to see anything you want to do. And he starts doing all of it right there at the table. You know, we're having, we're drinking sake and he starts going into the whole thing. And then, and the restaurant's closing. And the next thing, you know, the entire staff of the sushi restaurant is around the table and he's doing the FISM act. And it's just, my eyes are popping out of my head and their eyes are all popping out of their head. They start bringing us more food and bringing us drinks. They refuse to take any money from us. And it's like a magical experience just sitting with the guy. He's, you know, it just like all just happened. And it was incredible, just incredible to be a part of. It gave me a taste of like what is possible with magic. You know what I mean? Really yeah. Cool. And, and there's like this uh, lesson here, which is kind of a tough one to take because it would appear to fly in the face of what we might call the common wisdom which is that if you got a secret way of doing something and you've got a really great effect that it makes happen, as in I've got a method that makes cards look like they're vanishing into the light, <laughs> that I would take care in general not to let the audience know I have that method or tool before I did that. But Leonard opened his laser performance by literally saying, you know, hey, your card's over here, but I'm hiding it over here and then taking his empty hand. And I don't even really feel like he said I'm producing it from midair at that point. It was more like I'm sneaky. Right. And, and then going into now watch as it, I'm dealing the cards into the light. Now, I think he's priming their mind at that moment, right? He's giving them something to chew on so that they can appreciate that bigger effect of those cards vanishing as they hit the light. Right. If they don't have enough enough knowledge about the situation to even appreciate that, it might just go by them and they'll go, what? What just happened? Right. But by him saying, well, what I do is I just steal the card from the deck. Boom. Right. They're like, oh, whoa, wait a second. We need to watch this guy close. And now everyone goes and they zoom in on all of the hand stuff, all of the effects he's trying to present. And it makes it so they can appreciate how beautiful that vanishing into the laser light really is. Right. So there's a, like a, powerful. there's a powerful lesson there, right? Because I, I, with you, I'm assuming, well, man's been doing this a long time. It looks like even when he's doing the FISM act, it looks like he's just going, all right, I'll do some stuff. I mean, he's really got this look about him and this attitude about him as though he really doesn't have a clue which thing he's going to do next. And compared to Harry Lorraine, who sometimes, like I mentioned during those shows, really feigns that kind of thing incredibly well right. but this is a whole different thing because leonard is feigning uh, a guy that doesn't even really care that the audience is there and he's lost in his own creative world and it's it's a different kind of way of feigning it but he's feigning it whether you watch him in fism or in this situation he's just kind of all right we'll see what happens and then so he wouldn't do that pre-demo that, hey, it's over here. It's not like it's uh, unplanned or improvisational. Like Alex said, we can assume that it's done to help the trick that follows. And so we have a situation where you have a, 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 a trick that is so startling, so without context, so no way to sort of know where to pin it, what to pin on it, and or how to interpret what you're seeing, that it becomes more understandable as an effect even if at the same time it becomes a little more understandable as the method with some kind of setup, which on some level says, hey, I hide cards in my hand. Now I'm going to use the way you've seen me hide cards in my hand to make it look like cards disappear as I deal them to the table. It's just and even a, more and even more meta than that. I'm going to do sneaky stuff and you better watch me close or you're going to miss it. Right. I, th I think that's the real message. And I think it's a real great, great tool. I've seen a lot of magicians that do sort of those things that, that, you know, it seems like it's a throwaway effect, but it's really priming the pump so that magic can really happen. It's a very powerful tool. Very powerful I, tool. I, I find myself doing things of that sort here and there myself. I mean, sometimes what, what's nice about it is it 
demonstrates to the audience in a quick offhand manner that you need to be watched. That's right. A well-placed flourish does a, a beautiful thing for magic, right? Right. And if, and if they can't, because if they don't know that you need to be watched, they're not watching you enough for you to misdirect them cohesively. And they're certainly not watching you enough to be astonished. That's so, right. <laughs> right. The last thing a close-up magician wants is a bunch of eyes that are interested in other things. You know what I mean? We need you here with us on to the story. So right. establish credibility. <laughs> it's a powerful thing. And, 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 and it certainly explains some things I learned from reflex that always seem to be against the rules, but they always seem to be important to the show too. Right. I'm sure we all know what that feels like. So I'm pretty excited about this next one. Is this the one we were talking about before? Yeah, this one's got a, this one really showcases Leonard as a card magician and you'll see a lot of things that, that might make you second guess what just happened. <laughs> this is really good. Better than Bob. Finally, some ex you say so, of full shuffles. Oi. Name any card, anyone. Eight of hearts. Eight of hearts. Or ace, eight. So. Yeah. Here's the move. And I shook it. Um. A, car, a false count, and I can use, maybe I can use another card to name another card. Two of clubs. Two of clubs, perfect. Two of clubs. So in this case, sorry. <clears throat> two of clubs, that's difficult. Okay, I will use eight of hearts and... Um, <laughs> Two of clubs, I did a mistake. It was close. <laughs> so I will change ace of clubs here. And I think I do it here, so I did a switch. <laughs> now a false count, as I told you, and I use eight of... Um, uh, hearts <laughs> and two of clubs. Which card shall I use? Eight of hearts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, <laughs> eight, right? Here. Nine, ten. So this is a matter of uh, uh, <laughs> actually when I put one card at the table, it's not one. It just looks like one. It's a, a bunch of cards. <laughs> ba, 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 ba. Uh, more can take away this. Those tabled quints will get you every time. Name. No, I must memorize. Name a suit, anyone? Diamonds. Diamonds or spades? <laughs> yeah, I take both. Diamonds and spades. <laughs> yeah, I think you are soon you are used to these moves, right? So in this case, I must find uh, 26 cards. <laughs> so it's... Uh, yeah, I think I have 12 now. <laughs> Diamonds and spades. Good. So here is um, the diamonds. Close the spades. 
and diamonds. I take them after each other. So, diamonds and spades, right? In the middle. <laughs> got a little bit of it all in there all the big leonard techniques and sort of a demo fashion but like eye popping effects right like that the count <laughs> that was really something right it's just a false count yeah it's just a false count right well it is it, <laughs> just false. It, you know but here's the thing he's just got his own style of handling and his own style of handling is is the soil in which all of his unique approaches to all the things that magicians need to do uh it all grows in the soil of your handling right the way you handle the cards normally the way you shuffle and deal and mix the cards and just have cards selected and put back and shuffle the stuff that just has to happen without any sneaky stuff is what creates the context now we've all been taught that when we do card magic we want it to look like a we're not doing anything sneaky b like we want the audience to watch and if possible feel like we're not doing anything sneaky and that we are not overly skillful and that the sleight of hand uh, is like it's not there right and one of the greatest ways to make them know it is there is if you do something that's not the way you normally do it right? If you change your little way of doing something, you deal, you do that before you deal this next card, for, for example, uh, but you didn't before. It's like, mm. now Leonard on some level seems to be breaking all of those rules. Uh, on another level, he's not entirely, right? Because there's nothing about how he handles those cards that you've ever seen your grandmother do no matter how wacky your grandma shuffles right leonard shuffles wackier yeah you know yeah. it's it but it makes it fit within the context of all those things he's doing right they don't see none of those things seem out of place they sort of seem congruent to each other that's and there's some places where he goes overboard on some of these shuffles and it looks like he just can't even hold the cards in his hand they're just falling all over the table and like that chaos is like part of the 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 aesthetic right how could i possibly be doing anything because everything is being shuffled and mixed and i'm not even handling them like they're cards how could i be controlling anything right but he clearly is at all moments and it's just astounding it's astounding it's really like as a card magician like i look at that and just say you know it fits with his style and it's a beautiful thing because he the effects that happen at the end of all of these sequences I was in the room. I mean, I, it was like a gut punch to these people and they were all laymen. They're going, how is this guy doing this over and over again? And that's the, I would imagine that's the experience that Leonard has everywhere he goes. You, you know how they say that being an expert is about knowing part of being an expert is knowing when to break rules, which are largely guidelines, which protect people that don't know them intimately, you know? Because if you know them intimately, you know why they're there and you don't necessarily need to follow them if you're in one of the many exceptions. Right. The reason Leonard's unnatural card handling works is because it's been so perfectly natural and consistent to him. So when you're watching him, he's shuffling the way he's always shuffled and you've never seen him shuffle differently. So it all ends up being part of the same movie in the same way when you go to the movie and you see the animated tree, the only reason you would say that tree is not a normal tree would be as if it were the only animated tree. But if you're watching the animated movie, all the trees are animated and that tree is perfectly natural within this story. And in the same way, a magician is a story when you see a magic show. And Leonard has built all this wonderful magic into how he handles the card. And it's hard for us to know with certitude, unless we were Leonard, which came first. But the simple truth we know as magicians is there is no first. They are built together. Everything you build that deceives an audience is built with its uh, support parts that surround it. You know, it's like buying a plant that's not in a pot of soil. You don't get a little plant unless it's got its own little, 
its own little ecosystem, as our friend used to say, uh, right there in it. It's astonishing to see. And I think it's also amazing that I'm pretty sure his character, his professorial character, who is kind of demonstrating and experimenting with magic, you know, he'll do one of these things and go, ah, it's a switch. Which, again, is, is, ah, I switched the cards. Here's a little false count. He'll say something like that. And I don't really get the impression he necessarily changes how he presents it very much when he's, when, when, when he's working for people in, the, in those waiters in the restaurant, right? No, it's all, it's all the same. And like I said, it's all laymen that are watching this show, right? There, there are a magician or two that were in town that were able to you know, sit in the audience because they knew Leonard was there. But literally, it's all laymen that are watching this. And he, I think he's using those, again, like we were talking about the ploy of, ah, and I just steal the card. Ah, you're watching close. I think it's like he's pulling back the curtain a little bit. And he's like, you know, it's just this magic stuff. You do a little switch. You do a little thing like this. You do a little fake count. It's, it's magic stuff. But that leads to this. And then he can do these bigger effects. And it's like he's giving them enough information to be able to get the effect so that they get the punchline of the joke he's telling, right? Well, and part of what his effect is, is to say, look at this. I can steal the cards. I can palm the cards. I can no fake doubt. pretend to deal the cards this way. And with all those magic moves, just take a look at what kind of illusion is created when I put it all together, which if you think about it is a lovely way around the problem. And I think it's very easy when we watch magic to, to focus on the aspects we can see without noticing the aspects of the illusion, which we are so deeply surrounded in that we don't notice them at all, right? And so Leonard learned along the way that more magic would be yielded by setting it up as though we just said, which is, you know, it's counterintuitive. I mean, we've all learned that for the most part, if the audience smells your skills and things, it tends to spoil the big trick that comes next. But Leonard found that setup, like a TED Talk, allows him to do the magic tricks and have people almost abandon a suspension of disbelief, which is a main goal of a lot of, a lot of us and say to them, hey, you know what it is. I've shown you the gist. There's no worry about catching me. Just look at the pretty lights, you know? And, and then they do. And he uses other techniques that are a lot like that to create the same effect. Like he'll, at a certain point, he's talking, he's talking about science. He's talking about physics. He starts talking about medicine. There's one piece that I have. It was just a long, long piece and it didn't seem like it was appropriate to bring here, but he's using fractals. And he's talking about the power of fractals and using the patterns that are in fractals and looking for those patterns within the cards to try to achieve these things. And it's a, a beautiful barrage. And again, you know, you're just hit with this cloud of information and all these techniques and you're left with, wow, that was a magical experience. Like I know that people, when they were leaving after seeing Leonard, all these laymen, they're just like, that has to be the guy, the best card handler on this planet. And he's so magical and it was wonderful. And for most of those people, that's the magician they're going to get to see in person. And that's the story that they carry with them, that they tell everyone. When I, and when the idea of magic comes up, they go, you know, I saw this guy once. And they tell that story, right? It'd be interesting to hear what their story is, knowing the cloud that we see Leonard creating here. You know, this whole web of deception that's going around the mind of a spectator. It'd be interesting to hear their story after the, you know, be a fly on the wall and hear after what they're saying to their friends and family. I saw this guy from Sweden and he was this card guy and it was amazing. What an interesting, interesting idea. I love it. I love it. I, we have one more piece here that we should look at. And this is a, uh, this is a quick trick. So watch close. You're going to love this. This is a good one. Actually, it was not true because my father, uh, he died when I was uh, a child and I idolized him. I, actually, I don't remember him, but my mother told me that he also worked he was a little, a little of a magician on a very basic level, but uh, he was very fun. So maybe he inspired me in that way. Uh, name any card. Um, Anyone? Yeah. <laughs> Five of diamonds, right? Five of diamonds. I will drop the cards and say stop anywhere, right? 
So I will drop them like this. And you say stop anywhere. Correct? Yes. Okay. Now? Stop. Yes. <laughs> Five of diamonds. Go ahead. <laughs> it's just yeah. a silly giant trick that just kind of smacks you in the head. I love it. Yeah, there's very, very little to say except, you know everything we said before except uh and that you know i mean that that's what comes of that right you can he can do just that kind of thing because that's just the kind of thing he set himself up to do what a marvelous selection my friend great stuff i, I really love leonard green he was it was a a big impact on my life meeting this guy and being able to study his magic and you know, being able to open all this stuff up and look at it again with fresh eyes and look at some of these methods again, really, really has been fun. And uh, yeah, I love Leonard Green. I'm so glad we got to do this today. Absolutely. Me too. We're going to have a quick uh, poll uh, with our members. So we're going to head off right now. So thanks for joining us today. Good afternoon, Astonishment. Uh, if you liked this, if you've never seen The Power of a True Magic Club, make sure that you hit the fantabulous follow button and the salacious subscribe button so you'll be let uh, in on the news every time we do a new video and go to contour.community and find out why we are the fastest growing club of magicians, the most supportive magic community in the entire universe, the best place to explore and share and discover the world of magic. Thanks so much. If you're in the club, stick around for just a couple moments. We're going to find out what our resident lay person thinks about all this amazing.